my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you're a normal watcher, I apologize. I was planning on really trying to get everything out as normal last week, but I was at a conference and things just didn't end up working how I wanted them. So I'm going to kind of mash the last like two-ish weeks of reading, which is still like, I think it'd be about the same length of video because I wasn't able to read a ton just because I was at a conference in a different province. So yeah, let's just get started. So the first book that I tried to read in the last two-ish weeks was <laughs> was, it's a mouthful, The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore by Kim Fu, I believe her name is. I had an arc of this, and unfortunately I ended up DNFing it uh, about 160-ish, 70-ish pages in, I believe. It wasn't bad, this is just a very different, like, <sighs> there is, it's kind of a, a, an odd-ish kind of book. There are those books that nothing really happens, but it's supposed to, like, make you evaluate your kind of, like, own actions and things, and they're... There's just these weird, awkward time jumps that just really didn't do anything for me. However, the writing was amazing. I don't think I would have gotten as far in it had I, that I did if the writing hasn't been as good as it was. Because I was really, really trying to get into the story just because the writing was just really, really solid. So the plot is actually kind of relatively simple. There are girls at this camp when they were young. And one of the really nice things about this book as well is that it is racially diverse with its cast. Which I always love reading books that are just like real world realistic <laughs> so our main characters are at camp something big happens which i don't want to spoil it if you do want to read it and it shows kind of the trickle effects of what happens to these girls in their later on lives which i feel like could potentially have been quite interesting but i just i got halfway through and i think i was at the like third person's point of view and i just really i just didn't care about any of these people i didn't like particularly any of them, let alone just care if, like, what happened to them. I didn't quite understand what the events that were happening were, how they were supposed to tie back to everything going on. And I kind of honestly just kept, for once someone's point of view was done, I just kind of forgot about them and then moved on to, you know, the next one. In all honesty, I was hoping, like, the most exciting part was going to be at the camp when the big thing that happens, but it was really, really anticlimactic for me, and I just kind of just like, I'm not going to force myself to finish this book. Maybe it's going to be for other people. Like I said, the writing was absolutely, I love the writing. I'm definitely going to keep an eye out on this author. She may not maybe write the same style of books that I like, but I'd like to see if she has some other stuff out there that I can go up a go. I feel like I saw that she had a book of poetry or something. Poetry's not normally my thing, but I will look to just kind of follow the author and see if she releases another book in, you know, a year or two that maybe will, will mix better with my personal tastes. Just because the book was like super not my taste, I don't feel like it's really right for me to give a rating for it. So, I mean, I'm just going to say I didn't finish it. However, if you like those kinds of books, this, this could be a good one. And it has some really, really strong writing. The cover is beautiful. The inside of the chapters has like little like um, clip art at the top that really did mesh well with like just the theme of the cover and the book and everything. So I really do give them props for that. The book itself was just really not for me, unfortunately. The next book that I kind of book that I read this week was um, a Sherlock Holmes anthology. I worked my way through my first story, which was a study in Charlotte. Charlotte. This is actually the first, no, sorry, this is actually, I think the second time I've read this story. I read it so long ago, I honestly don't remember much of it. I just remember being like, oh, that's the first Sherlock Holmes story. Oh, good. And yeah, I mean, like, once again, I'm, I'm not comfortable reading something as iconic as Sherlock Holmes. Like, it's Sherlock Holmes. I just, yeah, if you like mysteries and Sherlock and Watson and like, how they figure everything out at the end. I always just love at the end when you're like the whole movie, you're like, how is any of this connected? And then they get to the end and tie everything up. I'm like, you evil geniuses. Essentially, that's how I perpetually feel about Stephen Moffat, it seems like, too. The next book that I read was A Treacherous Curse by Deanna Rayborn. This is the third book in the Veronica Speedwell series, where Veronica and Stoker, for reasons that are explained in the book, start going on kind of like a not really necessary murder mystery, but one of Stoker's friends has disappeared, well, friends, I use that word loosely, has disappeared uh, while in Egypt doing a dig in, like, the, you know, Valley of Kings and that kind of stuff, and so they're trying to find out what's going on. Super, super, I mean, if you liked the first two books, you're gonna like this. I was so, oh, I need Veronica and Stoker to seal the deal, because if I get to the end of this series and then it's not done, I will riot. Oh my good lord. But yeah, so Veronica is just as sassy and snarky as she always is. We meet Stoker's ex-wife, who is a character in herself, as well as his ex-wife's mother, who 
I mean, it makes a lot of sense why his wife was that way. So, uh, but Veronica, man, she just takes them on. It's she just says things like that, just just throws them out there and just watches. Like she knows that almost like she could get away with it because people don't know how to interact with another girl who actually says these things because they're like, girls don't say that. But yeah, so I mean, if you liked the first books, you're gonna like this book. There's some Egypt. Egypt mythology, murder mystery, you find some jewels and hidden like crowns and tiaras and all this kind of stuff. It's really, really cool. I love always, I'm a sucker for anything like Egypt mythology, Egyptian history, you know, digs and Kai, like, oh, can you imagine all of like the tombs and everything that are still undiscovered up there? Like, oh my goodness. I mean, it's just so cool to get to go on all those digs. But yeah, so definitely five out of five stars. Love this book. Read it in one evening and one sitting. I'm like sold on Deanna Rayborn. Like this series is just like so, so good. Well, on my trip, I worked my way through Banished, the third by Betsy Chow, the third book in the Storymakers trilogy, I believe it is. So it is a concluding one. I honestly don't know that I can really say much about the plot just because it is the third book, but it's kind of a fairy tale retelling. We have a Wizard of Oz, you know, Dorothea is our main character, and she has kind of a BFF, which is kind of a Robin Hood retelling. Technically the daughter of Robin Hood, but kind of Robin Hood, which will make sense if you read the books. At the end of the second book, we had Dorothea, you know, there was a big twist that, you know, you're maybe not actually in the real world, or you may be dreaming kind of thing. And that's kind of where this picks up. So she has to try and straddle with how to figure out, is she in the real world? Or is like, is she actually insane? And like, everything she's thought is actually, like, all of her like, Im imagination. And then she meets people who look like the people in the story. And then like, just chaos ensues. Overall, I think I give this book a 3.5 or 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. There wasn't as much, I think, fun and lightheartedness in the f from the first two books in this book, which was kind of disappointing because that is really what I loved about the first two books, that, you know, they were going on all these adventures and they had all these, like, fun, quick, like, one-liners and sassy, like, or they would, like, replace, you know, cuss words with, like, fairy fairy tale words and that was fun and I just didn't find that was quite there with this book. I also, even though I read, like, um, wanted the first book and then, no, spelled the first book and then wanted the second book, like, a couple months ago. I honestly don't know that I retained an awful lot because I just felt a little lost the whole time. There was just so many different plot points going on that I kind of had a hard time just keeping track of everything. That being said, even though I didn't totally understand or remember exactly what was happening to all the characters, I enjoyed it nonetheless. It was a good, fun, quick read. You know, it's a good, I think a good series if you're like not super sure what you want to read at the moment or or potentially feel like you're going towards, you know, a reading slump or something like that. It's just fun and light or it would also be really good, honestly, an introduction kind of series for people switching from middle grade to YA, maybe that preteen series, uh, that preteen age, sorry. But yeah, so I would honestly, if you liked the first two books, I think you're going to like this book as well. It just wasn't exactly what I was expecting. Um, but I'm, I'm really curious to see what else this author's going to come up with and oh my god the cover I absolutely love the covers in this series I want to give them a big shout out a for just continuing the covers throughout the whole trilogy because that seems to be like an impossible feat to most publishers nowadays but I honestly just love love the covers and honestly it does give you kind of a good feel it is a fairy tale retelling but I mean like it's fun and light and there's like the girls and like it's it's very like kind of girl powery and girl centric kind of thing I have also, well, I was also pretty, pretty slowly working my way through Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. And this was originally in my January TBR, but technically I finished it in February, but whatever. I, I started it in January. And this is a, a reread. I haven't read Outlander in, despite my channel name, I love Outlander. Um, I haven't read this book in a couple years, honestly. I, I, I don't even think I've actually read it since I've actually started using my Goodreads account like two three years ago so I honestly like I, I watched the tv show but the tv show is not identical to the book so there were parts that I remember being like oh I remember this oh yeah I forgot this happened so I mean I don't have a, a fantastic memory I mean there are books I could read and then finish and then be like I literally don't even remember the main character's name but this one it kind of just all started coming back to me and I loved getting to watch Claire and Jamie like kind of fall back in love together and like hmm I just, I, I, the historical fiction wise too, like this, I love the details put into this and I love like the historical effort. Like she does a lot of research to do things like this. And I've seen like, oh, it kind of annoys me when I see reviews where people are like, this book was sexist. And you're like, 
it was set in 16th -ish century Jacobite Scotland. Of course it was. So, I mean, don't go into it thinking 21st century modern whatever. But I honestly just, I love the time travel aspect. I like, every time I read this, I'm like, I wonder if I could travel to a time and a place where I would travel to and like what time and how fast would I die? Because I know I would die in a lot of medieval settings. I, I have a big mouth. I wouldn't be able to survive. But yeah, five out of five stars. Loved it again. I'm also not someone you come to to get an objective review of Outlander. Just fully putting that out there as a disclaimer. <laughs> I tried to work my way through Mistress of Rome by Kate Quinn, who I for some reason keep calling Alice Quinn apparently in all my videos, but but I actually ended up DNFing this book. Unfortunately, I think about three-ish hours into the audiobook, I just really didn't care about anyone or anything. I wasn't keeping track of what the plot was or anyone was doing. I remember there was a main character who was acting like super like stereotypically I don't even know what the like but just like spoiled rich girl privileged and wrong. I just you know wasn't wasn't into it. Um I think the issue was too is like I just finished reading The Valiant that I loved set in Rome and I'm waiting to read the copy of The Defiant the sequel also set in Rome and then I've also read like God's Grave which is kind of Romany. So, I mean, like, I've read a good chunk of books with, like, the female gladiator stuff that I got into as soon as the book started, and that was just not the feeling I was getting from this book, unfortunately. So, yeah, there's a main character who is, like, a 14-year-old. I think she was sold into slavery, and that's kind of all I was in for it. You can check the links in the description if you want a full better description, but I originally honestly just tried it just because I read Kate Quinn's The Alice Network. That's why I keep calling her Alice Quinn. Oh, okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. But yeah, so this is our other series um, that predates the Alice Network, and I think I like the Alice Network better. I just don't understand how this book has a four over four star rating on Goodreads. Like, I feel like I missed something, but then I'm like, no, I was. Uh, I don't know. Either way, if you like kind of Romany stuff, maybe that's something to, to take a look at. But. Yeah, I, you know, I DNF'd it, unfortunately. We are doing a buddy read, uh, or kind of a group read in the TBR and Beyond Facebook group, which if you're not a part of, a link in the description down below. Super, super fun and, like, lighthearted and, like, jokey and everything like that. But, yeah, so one of the things we're doing is we're doing a group read for Daughter of the Pirate King uh, till the end of, like, February or so, and then the sequel comes out at the end of February, and then we're doing a group read kind of chat of Daughter of the Siren Queen um, in mid-March or so, so everyone can kind of read it together, and you can check a duology off your list. You're done the duology. They're not big books. It's not a big series. You can pat yourself on the back. You started and finished a series. Alosa, the main character, is also my book girlfriend, so once again, not super subjective when it comes to reviewing this book. This is the fourth or fifth time I've read this book since it came out in, like, I don't know, like 12 months ago or so. Jack Sparrow, female redhead pirate, sexual tension, sarcasm. Kind of the best way that I can describe it. I, and I keep kind of relating it to it. If you like Gilmore Girl style comedy, like the quick one liners or like the long rambling sentences and like this sarcasm, I think this would be a good book for you to to give a go. But um, our main character, Alasa, fakes being kidnapped to be put on that kidnapper ship to search for a missing piece of a map that her father needs. Her father is the Pirate King. So we also find some interesting stuff about her lineage, but the guy that kidnapped her has a brother, Raiden, and they have feels for each other for sure. Put it that way and leave it that way. Five stars. I feel like I'm being awkwardly f like forward today with myself or the camera. I don't, I don't know. Or maybe you. I'm just thinking of you. Maybe. I don't know. It's... Oh, I don't know what's wrong with me today. And the last book that I read in this kind of weekly-ish wrap-up thing was Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. This is to fill my 2018 goal of every other month trying to read a classic. Just because, like, we do retellings of them, so I don't know exactly what the heck the retellings are based off of. And, like, the Disney films and everything. And, oh my god, Disneyfication is, like, real. Exhibit A. Like, oh. Yeah, so I read this book. It was super awkward and uncomfortable, and I honestly felt kind of dirty being in the same room with this book. Partially, I know it's a product of the time, but I am a product of 1992 and now live in 2018, where we don't use terminology like this, nor even vocalize, or I've honestly never even thought some of the, like, stereotypes in here. So it, it just uh, it kind of took away all the appeal for me, and, I mean, I feel like this, like, the the premise of being taken away to another world and all that kind of stuff as like a kid and everything 
I don't know, that premise has kind of been stolen from me by Harry Potter being like the most amazing thing. That was my childhood. So, I mean, like, I'm obviously kind of, yeah, but I I don't, again, it's a classic, so I don't know that I totally feel comfortable rating it, as well as I couldn't get past the terminology. And like I said, I know it's a product of the time, but I think we do still need to make comments based on things I like, the discussions I've been seeing on Twitter and everything lately um, about books and, and, you know, representation and racial you know, people like almost subconsciously writing racial stereotypes into books without realizing it, especially indigenous people. I, ugh, I I work a lot with that just at my job. So things like this really just rub me the wrong way and it takes any kind of joy out of it. So yeah. So that is my weekly-ish wrap up. I think I'm back on schedule, so it'll just be one week next week. Um, let me know what you read this week in the comment section down below. Also check the description box for links to all of the books that I mentioned and links to my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.